Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first midnight of the year. Super excited to be here. It's Julia and I hosting LBA's virtual midnight. And our special guests tonight are Stephen West and Nancy Marchant. We're going to sit here for a couple minutes and let everyone get settled in before we get started. So everyone pull out your knitting and settle in. So for our guests who are here with us, please say hello in the chat. Julie and I will be taking turns to read the chat and we'll try to answer questions from the chat. Let's see where everyone's tuning in from. So many Why messages already. Oh, someone from Singapore, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles. Welcome, 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 everyone. We're so glad to have you here. Okay, so I'll introduce myself. My name's Amy, and I'm the owner of La Bienie Me, and I work with Julia. Julia is my communications assistant here at La Bienie Me. She's also my yarn support and event coordinator as well. So if you write to us asking for yarn support as a designer, you hear from Julia. Also, we run the color advice email um, box here at Lebanon Amy. So if you write to us and ask us for advice on yarn or colors, we're both responding back to you. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. I'm super happy <clears throat> to be here with Stephen and Nancy. Um, Stephen and Nancy, I don't even have a worsted book with me. Now. Oh, hang on. I have one. <laughs> so Stephen and Nancy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> worked with me on worsted book that i released this past fall um this was a kind of a, my first time going into publishing and um curating a collection together i had first um kind of dipped my toes into this with steven we um co-edited the pom-pom magazine um and that was really fun and i learned a lot and it kind of piqued my interest about this so I went ahead and pitched my idea to Len Magazine to make a book surrounding worsted weight yarn. And Cory um, Worsted features my yarn, Cory Worsted. Um, we were working in the middle of a pandemic and so I wanted to really keep it simple. And so I thought I'm just gonna use this one yarn because I wasn't sure how with like supply chain issues and contacting people about getting yarn, if it was gonna be possible to have different bases for the book. So I was super excited to reach out to Stephen and Nancy and asked them if they would like to join me on this book adventure. And they said, yes. So <clears throat> do you have the knit proposition? Julia? Yes. Okay. So Julia has the original sample of knit proposition and I'm wearing the original sample of the Canal Poncho. But this is by Nancy Marchant and the shawl is by Stephen West. <laughs> All right, so we're going to break this evening up into two segments. There'll be the Stephen West segment with his test knitters and the Nancy Marchant segment with her test knitters. So we're going to just jump right in and ask Stephen some questions for Knit Night. So let me say, Stephen, can you give us a quick introduction about yourself? Yes, for hello. those of you who don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome. I'm Stephen, and I'm obsessed with knitting and especially shawls. So I was really happy I got to do a shawl design for Amy's book. And that's my go-to design when I'm coming up with a new idea. I like to put it in a shawl frame or do a shawl design because I think of shawls as swatches because to me, they're the most like freeing thing. They can be any size, any shape. When it's too small, then you could just give it to a friend and pretend it was supposed to be that size. <laughs> if it's too big, there's no such thing as a shawl too big. So I just love shawls. And uh, I started knitting 16 years ago and I've been knitting almost every single day since. I could probably count on my fingers and my toes the number of days that I knit zero stitches in the last 16 years. So I never stopped. I, when I get addicted to something, I just keep on going. So here I am. <laughs> just out of curiosity, how many hours a day do you knit? It changes a lot now that I'm a dog dad. So I take him for walks and make him his little sweaters. But uh, on an average day, let's say like, you know, six to eight hours is a good knitting day. That's like, yeah. you know coasting through the day but some days I only knit like an hour if I'm doing lots of other stuff like working on book projects and emails and videos and all that fun stuff and some weekends I might pull like a 12-hour knitting day 
I've done that before. Stretch, yeah. We we, we've been there. (laughs) Not only on a special occasion. That's a bit extreme. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind knit provisation. Yeah, the shawl that Julia's wearing, that knit provisation. I started that shawl knowing that I wanted to do cables because I loved the non-superwash squishiness of that Cory Worsted yarn. And that's how I usually start my designs is letting the yarn speak to me and tell me what it wants to be. And it was just like screaming cables. So I started that cable and the top a yellow bit that Julia's holding. I just wanted the simple cable, but I love when uh, texture and uh, color um, like increases in size and you get like a motif that goes like small to big. So I wanted to play with that growth of that cable. And uh, then after I made that cable, I had no idea what I was (laughs) gonna do after that. So how I design a lot of these shawls is I just make one section until my fingers are itching to do something different. And then I play around with another stitch pattern. So I very much improvised this shawl on the needles and I didn't swatch beforehand or draw anything out. I just like to knit and see where it takes me. And that means I do have to rip out sometimes when it doesn't work. Or I I usually, when I'm designing on the needles, usually I try to do too many things to make it, you know, really impressive or to, you know, get all those ideas onto the needles. But sometimes it looks really messy and too much. So I do have to rip back sometimes and simplify. And that's why I wanted to put those little, there's these little polka dot slip stitches. I wanted that little barrier between the other stitch patterns to kind of frame and calm down those lush textured cables. So it's yeah. really good because when this shawl came in, I kept calling it the sampler shawl. That was kind of the name that it was our working name before we decided on the actual name knit provisation. And it was really literally in the midnight hour that we came up with this name. It was literally sampler until Julie and I were doing the final um, <clears throat> edits. Group reading. Yeah. yeah, the edits. And I was reading your inspiration to Julia while we were just double checking to make sure that everything was in there correctly. And you said in there, you said, I improvise the other stitch patterns while I design the fabric. So I hope that the same rhythm of playfulness and excitement translates to your needles while you knit this textural shawl. And I remember looking at Julia and saying like, oh gosh, Stephen's like the king of knit provisation. You know, and I was like, like stop <laughs> this is the name <laughs> yeah so that's a super funny memory for julia and i because we were like just about to send the book to print and then boom we had the perfect name so yeah, it could have been sampler shawl that's yeah it looks like yeah knit provisation really sums up just the spirit of what it's all about mm-hmm. and that i hope when i design that way and when i think it visually kind of works out into something um, nice to look at i hope that that uh, feeling of improvisation uh, yeah, translates to when you're making it, you kind of feel that same rhythm that I'm feeling like, ooh, this is interesting. And then you might, you know, okay, I'm getting used to the pattern. I'm ready for something different. And that's when the pattern changes. So oh, I love that. that way. Um, we have a question in the chat. Someone wants to know what the sweater is you're wearing, Stephen. Ooh, yeah, this one, I think this year I want to knit just as many sweaters as I've been knitting shawls. So I'm hoping this might be the year of sweaters. It might just be the year of dog sweaters, honestly, but that counts too. (laughs) So I'm wearing, this is called the Monsieur Plastique. I made this sweater named after my friend Paul, who's my friend and does all the makeup for my books and uh, photo shoots and stuff. And I wanted to gift him a sweater. So yeah, his kind of a stage name is Monsieur Plastique. So I made a sweater for him and then I loved the sweater I gave him in this royal blue for him. Oh, I remember that. And then I was like, oh my gosh. Why did I give this sweater away? <laughs> I had to knit one for myself. If you have ever gifted a knit to someone who's really knit worthy, but you're like, I did a really good job. That's on this. exactly <laughs> what I'm doing right now with this sweater. I gifted my first Felix sweater away and I was like, I need to make one for myself. Yeah, <laughs> so. Exactly. So this is yeah that same sweater, but this is with La Bienne May's Aaron weight. And it's so squishy with the Ecto lime green colorway. And I think this is... It's either stone or dire it's stone. wool. It's stone. I think it's stone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even when the light isn't so like perfectly. We know. We, know. we have the eye. <laughs> yeah. And it has the, <clears throat> my favorite feature is the little fingerless. Oh, that's so yeah. great. Love and that. This was a fun puzzle to come up with because it's a funky construction because it's a yoke sweater. Like it's the gray part is a yoke sweater and it's kind of like a cookie cutter where it's a raglan sleeve that's just like. Yep. popped into this yoke construction so that was a fun kind of puzzle to figure out but 
I love shaping and I love complicating, you know, you know, traditional sweater forms and how can I make them weirder? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. So outside of knitting for your books and your pattern releases, um, what kinds of things do you like to knit for yourself? So you're saying you're going to do more sweaters. Yeah, I'm going to do more sweaters. Let me see if I can get an example. Come here. Come here. Okay, this is what I like to knit. <laughs> this is going to be the year of little dog sweaters. So brioche is wearing a little brioche pup sweater. And I'm working on the pattern for this. But it's taken me a little bit of time because I know when I come out with this pattern, all of the Labrador lovers and the poodle fanatics are going to go size it for my dog. So oh, I'm working on lots of sizes. But let me get, see if he can show this off. This. So, I'm, so this is my personal project, this, <laughs> this little puppy sweaters. So it's That's all amazing. Pitch. Are we going to, uh, can we expect a, a pet? Snits, West Snits Pet Snits or something. Yeah, absolute West Snits Pet Snits, pet snits. Are, is in the future for sure. That's and, amazing. Uh, taking it just a couple projects at a time. But uh, yeah, he's wearing Corey confetti. He really loves the confetti. Because he's fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs confetti. Everybody. So this is my favorite personal project to work on. Oh, how fun. So let um, let me ask you a question. Are there any designers out in our industry, our community that inspire you? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Well, we're with one here, Nancy. I just love, I just love Nancy and brioche and all the crazy textures and cables and weaving inspired work she's doing now. But yeah, Nancy is just a big inspiration, of course, and we'll hear more from her in a bit. <laughs> and I really, I really love Olga Jazzy, her like 3D knitwear. Yeah. And I like work that's like really different from mine. So I love like Nancy, how intricate and she really focuses on stitch patterns and the intricacies of theme and variation with those little details. It's all about the details and uh, the technique with the brioche and the woven inspiration. And same with Olga. It's all about that 3D impact and it's really technical in the shaping that she does. And I feel like my work is more about the fun and the color. And so I really am inspired by, you know, people's work that is a little different from mine. That's incredible. Um, who taught you to knit, Stephen? Yeah, some friends, uh, maybe 17 years ago now. Do you all tell that story too? When people ask you when to knit, you just keep saying the same year. <laughs> and you're <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> I need to add five years to that. <laughs> So maybe 17, 18 years ago, um, 16, yeah, 17 years ago now, a friend in uh, school taught me just the basic knit stitch, and they got me going on a long rectangle scarf, and I thought that scarf would never end. I'm like, why didn't they I, teach me to knit a hat or something? Haven't we all done that never-ending scarf? I think I still have mine in a box somewhere where I started, and I was like, oh, this is taking too long. Move on to yeah, We all socks. have that scarf. We should all put them together and make a big... I don't know. Install hmm. <laughs> we can work on that. I'm sure that Nancy's got some interesting projects that could contribute. Oh yeah. Um, if you could be a knitting technique, Stephen, <laughs> what knitting technique would represent you? I would have to strip things down to the basics and just, I would be just garter stitch technique. That would be me. Cause I think that's just a chameleon of a stitch. Cause you could do intarsia with garter stitch. True. You can put garter with brioche. You can do color work with garter, marling garter stitch. So I'd say garter stitch just because of the chameleon aspect to it. And that's something that I love about knitting is that you can always learn something new, but you can always take it down to the basics and just apply a simple technique and make a crazy sweater out of it or make a hat with that technique. So I'd say garter also in the hopes of I could keep using that technique to uh, push myself to learn some other new things I haven't played with as much, like maybe a lot more intarsia or something in the future. I'm feeling super inspired with intarsia this year. Yeah. <clears throat> Julie and I talk about it on a daily basis. We're, yeah. Yes. Really. So do you have any special projects you're working on right now that maybe you can sneak peek us? Yes. Well, besides the little brioche pup sweater, I'm excited about that. But I haven't shown this to anybody before. So I'm going to reveal the news now. We're starting off this year with West Nets. We're going to do a new book. And it's coming out in just a couple weeks. It was amazing. And it was actually, it was supposed to come out like a few months ago, but you know, printing, Amy, mm -hmm. are you I do. Here? I do. Yeah, things don't happen when they're going to happen. <laughs> so I'm just pretending it's supposed to be now. So in a couple of weeks, there's a new book. And I'll show you the cover. Surprise, surprise. It's all about shawls. 
but it's yes. going to be called painting shawls and it's going to have a few oldie shawl patterns not oldie but uh, ones that are already out like the painting bricks painting waves Amazing. and there's eight new shawl patterns in here <gasps> i love oh. that yellow it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hardback let's get <gasps> There's lots of new stitch motifs and stripes wow. and triangles and so the whole theme of this book is yeah painting shawls and I wanted to uh, develop more of these shawl patterns with slip stitches where you have this main color framing all these contrast colors so I put a lot of chapters in this book with like photos to help you plan your oh, color nice. palettes <clears throat> and watch we're gonna have to do a dog edition after this book. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are waiting for it. Yeah, but I love the idea of when you have a main color in your project, it really forces all the colors to like go together. So you can really get scrappy and put these crazy colors together um, that uh, are balanced by that main color. And here's one of my favorite patterns in the book. Oh, like, recognize aw. that one. Oh my gosh. Collage of different geometric forms cool. so you'll see a bit of love getting my yarn in the book and a lot of other <laughs> simple shawls and some more intricate ones but uh yeah i'm really excited to get this book out on january 25th will be the pre oh very soon that's amazing yeah, exciting yeah, so well it's, thanks it's my first hardcover book too so i'm really excited oh i was gonna say it looks like a hardback cover that's amazing there's something about a nice hardback book it just feels really good in the hands you know well, thanks for that, Stephen. Let's bring forward some of your test knitters so that yeah. we can meet them. We're gonna bring up Anne. And actually, Nancy, I'm gonna I'm gonna unpin you. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Louise and Linda. Where did Louise go? There's Louise. Hi, Louise and Linda. Okay. Um, think if everyone can unmute themselves that would be great welcome so we wanted to talk to designers I mean we talk to knitwear designers a lot but behind every designer they have their test knitters who test their patterns and I and I relied heavily on my test knitters for this book because I mean we needed to test knit all the patterns before putting it into the book to make sure that we worked out all the little you know, little errata and things like that. And so I wanted to introduce Anne. Anne, hi. um, <laughs> hi, Anne. Anne test knit, knit provisation, and she actually yeah. knit the original sample for the Amy bundle from the book. I'm so proud to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks wonderful on yours. It's wonderful. And then we have Louise, who is, I think she's a longtime test knitter for Steven, for West Knits Patterns in general. Yeah, I've got on a couple of years now. <laughs> nice to meet you. As many projects as I have. I think she has a whole library. <laughs> and finally, we have Linda, who Hi. is a, a longtime test knitter for Stephen as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, wow. I'm his test knit coordinator, basically. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to turn this segment over to Julia. She's going to be interviewing you, and I would love to hear more about all three of you. <laughs> so hi, I'm gonna hi. start with Anne ah. because um, Anne uh, knitted our the sample for that was in the book. So we worked together last year, and it was really awesome. So I wanted to ask Anne, could you introduce yourself and let us know where you're from? Yeah, of course. Hi, I'm Anne. I'm from South of Germany. I live in Karlsruhe right now. And um, yeah, there's uh, not much to say about me anyway. I, uh, I really like art. Uh, I studied fine arts and um, what I really like about knitting is that it lets me play with all these colors and all these techniques. And um, since I have not that much time anymore for painting, I really like to do knitting on the couch mm. and uh, there I can uh, express myself like you say, uh, artistically. Yes. And I really like to play with all the colors when I knit uh, for myself. I mostly do scrappy knitting. And um, yeah, um, I'm really happy that you had me knit the samples for this book. It was lots of fun and <laughs> I learned so much and I hope I could contribute to this wonderful book in any way. Uh, that's awesome. And so how long have you been knitting? 
I actually have been knitting only since May 2018. Really? Uh, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, I um I of course I knit the, the odd uh, stockinette scarf for my dad when I was young or something like that, but uh it was only one of many crafty objects I did then uh, like uh, try everything. And I really <laughs> got back uh, to knitting 2018 because I wanted to learn brioche. I um I had been crocheting for quite a while. And I was on Instagram and I saw all these beautiful brioche things. And I thought, well, um, I can't do this in crochet because mm -hmm. now I think somebody developed something that is looking a little bit like brioche in crochet. Oh. But that time um, there was nothing. And so I thought, yeah, well, then I will knit before knitting was my grandmother's thing. And mm -hmm. I did not want to take it from her. I know it's stupid today because she didn't own it and she totally doesn't <laughs> mind. <laughs> but it was something like that was somebody in my family was already doing. And um, so I got into it 2018 and I haven't stopped since, I have to <laughs> say. Um, I got kind of obsessed with it. And like always when I learn new things, I want to know everything about it, everything. <laughs> so I... I try to do with every new project a new technique yeah, and of amazing. course this way I also got into test knitting because I wanted to do that too <laughs> and I want to do everything and um, so this test knitting thing really allows me to to explore all the new uh, patterns and techniques and get to know the artists like I, I see the designers um, mm. and uh, their, what they are expressing with that and how they think about this and how this is constructed and it's all so exciting for me. So um, this was really exciting to work for this book and to actually get to test uh, a Stevie West pattern and I also tested the uh, and the Saraya shawl yes. and it was such fun. Hmm? Oh, that's amazing. So yeah, I was going to ask you why you started test knitting, but you actually answered that question because <laughs> you just want to discover everything. Yes, I that's really amazing. wanted to learn everything about it. And mm. maybe uh, I can also do our own design one day. But right now I'm really happy with test and sample knitting. Mm. Mm. Oh, There's a couple so questions that came in through the chat. If I oh. can ask Anne specifically, yeah. somebody they want to know what are the sweaters behind you on the wall? Ah, this, um, I put up my, my recent, my most recent test knit. This is the, fe uh, the festive yoke uh, cardigan by Skein Deer. Mm -hmm. This is in the Helix. In yes. Oh. I can get it down. Because I finished all my test knits before my, uh, my, my baby was born in the end of November. So these are the recent things that I did. So beautiful. Yeah, that's so cute. So, so cute. And you see, I, I really love Fair Isle as well. Yes. <laughs> and the other one, wait, let me put it up again, is uh, something I did for my son. Penguino. It's a penguino. It's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. And I put it here as an example for my scrappy knitting because I really yes. like that. Mm. And of course, it's a West knit pattern because yeah. in West knit pattern, you can do this really well. So I like doing that a lot. Yes. Another scrappy knit West knit pattern is like the bubble cone. The bubble cone. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I really like doing that. So yeah, um, there, were, there were more questions. These are the projects behind me. Yeah. I think um, the, the chat's great because people talk to each other and they answer each other. I just want to say if, um, if anyone's talking too fast about the specific things they talk about in the video, I will put it in the show notes. So like the names mm -hmm. of the patterns and everything like that. So I'll definitely be re-watching and taking notes and putting that into the show notes this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I wanted to ask you specifically, because you knit the sample for knit improvisation and you test knit the pattern, you were actually one of the first people who tried Corey Wested, our new base, mm -hmm. because uh, that yarn wasn't out yet. And we had started dyeing it very recently and we were dyeing it specifically for the projects in the book. So I wanted to ask you, did you enjoy trying Corey Wested? 
of course I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was super, super exciting. Um, and also when I, I remember when I unpacked this and I knew I was one of the first people to actually see and feel this, it was uh, such a great moment. I felt very honored. And at the same time, I got very excited about working with this yarn and uh, how all the patterns will work out. Because um, mm -hmm. like, uh, like we all, like Stephen already said, this, it was very, um, there, his pattern has many cables. And I mm -hmm. thought, oh, with cables, this is going to look great. Mm. And um, there also were these beautiful colors. I actually know quite a few of the Labienne colors on other bases. So it was really interesting to see, like, for example, the Fluoro Marguerite. Mm. Marguerite, what's it in Morganite, English? Morganite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Morganite. Um, uh, to see on this base and uh, to see how all the colors work together on this specific base. And that was really cool. And um, yeah, it, it was um, very nice on the hands. And it in summer, I have to say, so it was warm it's sometimes. True. Yes, yeah. it's true. Um, but uh, it was so worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you writing in the emails and telling us, oh, it's really warm knitting this. Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, um, you and Steven were the first to get the very first batch of fluor morganite that ever came oh, out of the true. box. It's true. Yes, oh, it's so true. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. One of my favorite like... colors here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. I'm really into the neons. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the first and only, for now, neon we've dyed on Cory Worsted. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Coco is pretty. Coco's pretty flashy. pretty Coco, flashy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And uh, oh, so I wanted to ask you, what kinds of things do you knit for yourself? I, like I said, I really like the scrappy knits. So for myself, I mostly knit sweaters mm -hmm. and I also knit shawls. Um, but when I can choose, I usually wear uh, knit sweaters. <laughs> mm. Mm. Many. And you're wearing a very, very beautiful Mr. Ical. Yeah, this sure. is uh, the the last year's. Yeah, it's the slip extravaganza. Yeah. Yes. Wow. This year I I was kind of busy with. Uh, <laughs> Were you? Oh. <laughs> baby building. And yeah, this is also one of my recent test knits. This is the the ranunculus. Of course, yes. this is out, but yeah. uh, there will be an update for the sizes, and this is one of the new sizes. Ooh, Beautiful. That's very mm -hmm. very pretty. So Midori will be happy that I said that here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us, Anne, and mm -hmm. thank you so You're much welcome. for joining us. It was so nice. Thank you for inviting me. Ah, oh, no you. problem. <laughs> and now I'm going to talk to Louise. Hi, Louise. Oh, hang on. Oh, here, I'll do it. Time. Yeah, I'll press my mouse. Sorry, I muted myself first. <laughs> no problem. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Louise. Welcome. <laughs> it's really nice to talk to you. I've actually been following you on Instagram for ages. I love, like, I love everything you knit. Uh, you just choose all the colors. Just that's exactly the, um, the kind of color palette that I love. So okay. thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Yay. <laughs> so could you please introduce yourself and let us know where you're from? Yeah, so um, I'm Louise. I go by Elsie Pop on Instagram um, for reasons unknown. Um, and, um, I'm from Surrey in England, just outside London. Okay. And how long have you been knitting? Um, I think I've been knitting since 2016. I just had to check on my Instagram because it feels <laughs> like it's forever. Um, I, I started knitting, I think about 2011. Um, mm -hmm. I did like the garter stitch scarf in chunky wool and then thought this is really boring. Um, and then I got myself into crochet because I loved how, you know, crochet kind of gives you that freedom to like use one hook to create all kinds of things. And some of the patterns that I saw out there in the crochet world um, were just amazing. And then I found Stephen's patterns and thought, right, I've got, I've got to get back to knitting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I think I've knit them all now. At last <gasps> you have, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big accomplishment because yeah, no, no, not quite there but i'm working on it working <laughs> on, I've, got, I've got a few in the background on, <laughs> yes. on <both> sides. <laughs> <laughs> and so how long have you been test knitting 
Um, so I've been test knitting for about two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, Stephen was the first person I test knitted for. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was very exciting to, to, to test knit for him. Um, and a, a select couple of other test knits that I've, I've been on as well. Um, I like I like supporting kind of younger and like new designers as well. So quite often if I see that someone's launching their first design, I'll try and test knit for them just so that. Oh, great. Nice. Yeah, because you're quite experienced now, so you can actually help the designers. Yeah, yeah. And it, I think it's really hard when you're putting your first design out there. Um, so getting people willing to test it, I think is really important. Mm. I follow a few accounts on Instagram that, that help to like put out test knitting calls. For yes. Designers and new yeah. Designers. I follow a couple as well. I think there's one, there's one I really like called fat test knits. Yes. I and love that. I, yeah. Yes. I love this one because she really gives visibility to size inclusive mm -hmm. designs. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I use that. I use her. So uh, I, she actually posted a, a test knit call for me for the first thing that I've ever Oh, amazing. <laughs> so, Congratulations. <yeah. laughs> Can you tell us about it? Um, yeah, I've got it here. It's, um, it's a shawl because I am a shawl fan uh, <laughs> and it's just like, I'm quite into meditative knitting. Like I tend to knit in front of the TV. Um, and I think everyone's just been so stressed out throughout the pandemic that like garter stitch is king right now. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of mostly garter, but it has like a small panel down the middle, which is Ooh, pretty. Um, so yeah, and it sits over the shoulder, which is quite good for like plus size figures. Yes. Um, it, it doesn't fall off like some of the straight edge shawls do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to releasing that, although a little bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> jump in, just jump in. This is so exciting. <laughs> Yes. And so I wanted to know, so you just said you knit mostly shawls and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm lost in my notes. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> During the pandemic, I kind of moved away from shawls a little bit because really? I, I knitted a lot of shawls before the pandemic because mm -hmm. I commuted to London, which is cold, mm -hmm. horrible and gross. And you always want to have a scarf on. Um, but when I found myself working from home for two years, I just want to sit here in a nice big knitted cardigan. So yes. I'm using a lot more clothes now. Um, and some of the, you know, Jessie May on Instagram, so she does a lot of kind of knitted underwear, which is just a delight to work from home in. So I've knitted a few kind of pieces like that too. Um, mm. and moving more towards kind of garments now, really. Oh, amazing. Oh, that's really nice. And so, um, which of Stephen's designs have you actually tested? Whew, um, <laughs> too many to count. <laughs> I'm actually testing one right now. Um, <laughs> quite a few. So I did test it the bubble card again, which I think is yeah. one of my favorite um, yeah. tests ever. And it's so amazing to wear. If anyone's got it on their list, I would can put you, it. Can you stand up and show us? Because I need I to see more it. of this card again. Yeah, that's, I have. I oh my gosh. <laughs> Size, so it's just the most comfortable piece. Um, this is a West Knit as well. Yes, new. it's I the Batad. That one too. <laughs> I have one. I have one. It's the Batad. It's the most awesome cowl. I love it. Yeah, I, I, it's it's so useful. I, I've only just finished this, and it's not blocked yet, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think the Penguono was my favorite ever test. I don't want to test it, but I yeah, that's my favorite one. Um, in terms of other test knits, I. Oh god, Bubbles and Brioche um, was a great shawl. Um, and also the painting bricks. I love yes, that. Yes, the one. painting bricks, yeah. yeah oh my gosh, one of my that's so beautiful. And it was just so like it's still one of my favorite shawls to this day. It's so oh, perfect. Oh, I love your colours. A better pattern, really. So yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Louise, we have a question from the um, chat. Someone wants to know, how does one become a test knitter? Ooh. Um, so Stephen asked me on Instagram, um, which is how I found my way to it. I, I don't know the, the usual procedure, um, but look for test knitting calls on Instagram. Um, it's quite, they've, there's quite a lot of hashtags around test knitting. Mm -hmm. So hashtag test knitters wanted um, test knitting call. Um, and that will help you to find some of the smaller designers quite often as well. Nice. I know that there's like dedicated groups on Ravelry as well. So 
that's another place to look. Also, you could reach out. I mean, honestly, if you reach out to us and ask us if we need to test it, we always have stuff that needs to be tested. So <laughs> <laughs> you can write to us at yarn at com if you're interested in testing. <laughs> yes, and we'll put you in touch with designers. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Oh, I'm too hot. I had to take off the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So, Louise, thank you so much for, for joining us. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a last question to ask you. Um, this is the question we ask everyone. Mm -hmm. If you were a knitting technique, which one you, would you be? Um, I think I would be two color brioche uh, because I was obsessed with it before I could do it. Um, and then I discovered it's actually quite easy and looks really impressive. And that's how I approach my day job. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being with us. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to talk to Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Can you please let us know where you're from and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Linda Björk Eriksdóttir. Uh, I'm also known as Barbanit on Instagram. Uh, I'm from Reykjavik, Iceland. Born and raised. Uh, and yeah, in short, that's who I am. Yes. And how long have you been knitting? Uh, probably since I was like six. Wow. But, but I've been a knitter with like a capital K since I was, well, I would say for the past like 16 or 17 years. Mm -hmm. And how did you, and when did you decide to start test knitting? Um, it was, it was Stephen's fault, actually. <laughs> Blame Stephen. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was visiting Iceland and I suddenly got a message from him, him on Instagram and he was like, hey, do you want to hang out and knit? And I was like. <laughs> Is this, no. a fake, is this a fake account detect, you know, contacting no, me, I don't want to hang pretending out with to be Stephen? <laughs> no, you I don't want to no, hang out no. with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had coffee and we just became friends. And we worked on the Marl Magic show together. Oh, That was like the first one. Mm. Your um, Marl Magic is my dream Marl Magic. I literally need to get the exact same colors and make it the same. <laughs> the, sh the, the sweater or the shawl because I, you know. Both. I want to say both. <laughs> For me, it's the sweater. Yeah, I mean, I made a shawl, like my second Marl Magic shawl I made to match the sweater. Oh, those colors. So, and then, so I have like a, and then I have like the single color Marl Magic sweater that I'm wearing now. Okay, I was just about to ask you because someone in the chat was asking what it is. Can you stand up and show us? I, I can try. <laughs> it's an impressive sweater. It's, 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 a, it's a little sweater, bit of fashion but... show. I have to warn my guests next time. Okay, I'm I'm holding the computer. It might be a bit shaky, but wow. it's like it's in a single color. I need a one color. Oh my gosh. And it's in our color, Amy. Almost, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I love how it's now your color, both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I, I are friends, can, and we I, have that in common. Yeah. <laughs> we like that color. <laughs> I've I've made two of these, and it's that absolutely awesome. my favorite project of all times. Ah, oh, that's amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I I've watched your podcast for a really long time since oh, you started well, you. and I remember when you were knitting it and I kept thinking ah which color should I choose which color should I make mine and so I haven't decided and I haven't what what's, mine. what what's the color of your heart this color yeah then do it in this this yes. one yeah let's do it let's do a knit along let's do a one color no! magic sweater knit I'm along. ready for a new one okay <laughs> well I think my mound magic shawl is my actual favorite shawl mm -hmm. ever I wear it a lot. I need to make, because it is so fun to knit. Yeah. You, you're changing all the time. And yeah. you're, as soon as you get bored, like Steven said, you you start doing something else and then something else. You can do it completely scrappy. Mm -hmm. And I've just started spinning and I've decided as soon as I have enough spun fiber, I'm going to knit a Mount ooh. Magic shawl with it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. exciting. Yeah. I got, I well, got all like, ooh. 
Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Because my my first my part is a little bit like some part is thick like this and some part is thin like this. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you know. But that's time. why the Mount Magic shawl is such a a, a great uh, pattern because like who cares about gauge and thickness yeah. of your yarn yeah, and doesn't matter. You can knit it in any yarn weight. So. Mm -hmm. You guys, the chat, they want to do a Marled Magic knit along. Oh, I'm uh, up for it. Let's yes. host this. Me, Julie, and you. Let's do this. Let's make yeah. it happen. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And we could do sweater, Sean. Yeah, we'll just yeah, call both. the Marled Magic Cal, and then they can pick whichever one they want to do. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you could do all leftovers or um, all in, in one color or... I'm doing one in Yellow Brick Road. Yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> well, amazing. I don't even need to ask you questions, Linda, because we obviously have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Just geeking out on, on Westnet's patterns. No problem. But I do have some questions to ask you. So yeah. um, because you did say you are uh, Stephen's coordinator for his test nets. So yeah. I wanted to know, like, what exactly does that entail because that um, sounds fascinating <laughs> well um steven has an idea a lot of them actually not just one just like <laughs> a idea. lot <laughs> <laughs> um and he writes up a pattern and passes it on to me and i contact our pool of testers which is about 90 people wow all over the world um and everything is volunteer. You don't have to do anything. It's just like, if you have time, if you want to, if the design is something you want to do, you can absolutely join. Um, and then I just gather a pool of testers. There might be three people. There might be 25, mm. just depends. Uh, I distribute the pattern and then they basically communicate with me if they have like they run into typos or errors or there's something not right and i kind of gather that info and pass it on to steven he makes edits and then i i'm just like i'm the middle link kind of mm. between the coordinator steven. yeah mm. I'm, the, I'm the middle link between steven and the tester because you know he knits a lot and he has a lot of <laughs> stuff to do so i'm kind of like the buffer so he doesn't have to have like everything like every single email like oh there's an error blah, blah, blah. and then 15 minutes later no i figured it out it was okay it was nothing <laughs> yes you know. th that actually sounds like a lot of emails a lot a yeah. lot <laughs> yeah it, it can be but you know mostly for i mean if it's a hat it's mm. usually pretty basic but yeah. if it's like uh six or seven different sizes in a sweater it can be a lot mm. yeah wow that sounds that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and and do you test all of Stephen's patterns? No, no, I don't have time for that. Nobody has time for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean nowadays I basically pick and choose, and I yeah. usually always do the mystery knit alongs mm. because I'm you know I love them and they yes, are like they're so oh, fun. Yeah, <laughs> mystery knit along this year is my colors. That kit, this one, yeah. Yes. That, I that was that's my color right there. Yeah, I gifted it to my mom and she loves it. I was like, can I borrow it for the knit night? She was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really beautiful. Oh, wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. That palette is amazing. It is. Because it's all neutrals and fluoromorganite, like, mm -hmm. pow. Yeah. Now I'm obsessed with fluoromorganite. When you were talking about it earlier, I was like, oh. Yes, everyone is we, yeah. we all are <laughs> speaking of fluor morganite do you have something you can sneak peek us linda it's actually made with fluor morganite and yellow brick road <laughs> it's true <laughs> amazing <laughs> i remember when i sent you the pictures to help you choose your colors <laughs> yep. You were like, I'm thinking floral morganite and yellow brick road, but mm -hmm. I'd love to see different color options. And I sent you pictures and I was like, but that's the one I like best. And you were like, yep, that's the yep. one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. It, 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 it was not a difficult choice. No, it was super easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually like designing something. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I'm designing a cowl. I have a prototype here, which is Yay! not in La Bienname, but it's in Rauma Finu. Oh, mm. beautiful. Wow. wow. And it has like all these nordic wow. icelandic motifs and wow. it's, like a, it's it's basically an infinity scarf you can wrap it like twice Gosh, around it. oh incredible it's really Is every motif it, different it doesn't repeat no it's, <gasps> it's new and exciting every time <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to do one you know you can, you can do that but you know that's boring so the other one is in yellow brick road and flora morganite and i also changed the order of the motives as well oh, awesome oh my gosh so i just i write like in the pattern i write like motive one two da, 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 and you can do them in order like i did the original and then i just used like a random number generator and just like oh, boom. great idea oh, great yeah. it's like pick your own adventure knitting yeah it's a lot of fun Oh my gosh. I I'm would also... do only dragons, only the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. And I was talking to Stephen love earlier. Dragons. Before we came on, I was talking to him and we both love the chickens. Look at them. Oh, oh my gosh. Them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And I'm also doing like um, yardage for each uh, motive repeat. So if you want to wow. use scraps, you can totally do that as well. Or minis. Yeah, or minis. Yeah. Mm. And so you're using our Twist Nouveau base. Yeah. Which is our fingering, non-super wash, 100% mm -hmm. merino. Mm -hmm. Do you it's like amazing. it? It's, it's incredible. I had like two and a half hours of uninterrupted knitting time last night, which hardly ever happens nowadays because I have a big family. Mm. Uh, and I was just like, Oh, this is amazing. And I only knit <laughs> on this the whole Aww. time. <laughs> and it's really amazing. I really love it. And thank you. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's very exciting. Thank you, Linda. So if you were a knitting technique, which one would you be? Hmm. It's not exactly a technique. It's more like a superpower. <gasps> okay. And it's, it's using scraps, like the tiniest bits of, all kinds of scraps, marling them together and just playing with uh, different uh, yarn bases and just playing with your yarn. That would be my knitting superpower, kind of. I yeah. love that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And also just putting all those colors together, creating those palettes, mm. you create the most amazing <laughs> palettes. Thank you. Mm. I have a, I have a, because uh, my gateway pattern to Stephen's Your gateway thing, pattern. yeah, it was like a gate, like, they like say the, gateway, the gateway, gateway drug. drug, but no, it was a pattern <laughs> to Stephen's designs was the Vertices Unite shawl. Oh, I love that shawl. Um, made five, I think, but I don't have one for myself because they've all been gifts. So I'm going to make one for me. Wow. With, my, with my colors and scraps and just play mm. i want to knit that one too my brother <laughs> my brother is knitting the vertices unite baby blanket right now for his yeah. best friend yeah. and it's 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 got me wanting to knit it too okay we're gonna have to host some cows i think yeah <laughs> yes yeah. well i'm up i'm up for it <laughs> people in the chat are very very excited about your cow design linda so oh yay, yay. i hope i hope to release it in march I hope so. Yay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Amazing. Well, we will be in touch about that. Yes. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for Great. having me. All right. So we're going to move on to the second session right. with Nancy. I thought that we would just take a, a break really quick here. I'm going to unpin everyone. Up. Thank you, testers for Steven. Up. Here we go. I'm going to bring Nancy back up. Hi, Nancy. Hold on. Let me ask you to unmute. There we go. Hi, Amy. Hi. I just wanted to ask, how's everybody feeling? Nancy, or Stephen, I'm going to ask you to unmute. How are you guys feeling? Do you guys want to power on or do you want to take a little break? I'll go on just a little bit and maybe we could do a little break later. Okay. Yeah, that's fine.
Yeah. All right, let's yeah, take a little here. break here and then we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, so we can just, you can turn, you can turn your screens off, mute, and we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay.
<clears throat> Hi everybody, I think we're coming back. Let me just stop the music here. Welcome back to the second half of Knit Night. Um, we just took a break. Now we're back with Nancy. That's Nancy to unmute. Hi, Nancy. You're muted. Uh, I'm, I'm unmuted? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have two more stitches. Sorry, wait. All right, finish your row. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Honestly, this is the group of people that you can say this to. Let me I know. <laughs> So, hi, Nancy. How are hi, you? Hi, Amy. <laughs> so, I've got Nancy Marchant here. She joined me for Worsted, my book, my, my little yellow book here. And she designed the canal poncho. I'm wearing the original sample by Nancy, and Nancy's wearing her version. And Julia is holding up another version that we showed in the book. So Nancy, why don't we talk about Canal? Why don't you tell us about this design? Well, I mean, this all, uh, Amy and I talk a lot, you know, <laughs> and Amy sent me, uh, I think she sent me all 30 colors of Cory Worsted when she first dyed them. And I had been wanting to do a lot of, uh, yeah, just table work or something. I wanted to do something in color and Tarsha, that sort of thing. And, and so we talked for a long time and, uh, we decided that I would do something in colorful cables. And uh, so I made a lot of different samples and uh, we chose this one. This was sort of what we, we wanted in a poncho style. So yeah, that's more or less how this poncho originated. <laughs> hey, Julie, do you have the swatches behind you? I think you have the swatches in yes, your office. I have them. Yeah. I remember when we were going through the colors and I was kind of having maybe weekly calls with Nancy and she'll be like, look at this one. Look at this one. Yes. The work I mean, it was all like mixing all these different colors together. And oh, gosh, it was so inspiring. Um, it's okay, Julie, if you can't find it, it's oh. not a problem. Um, and so we landed on these colors here of the original sample. So it's like High Garden, uh, Kitsune Moria, and Belle Rose, yeah, which was like know. colors that I would never put together, but that, that worked so well. I mean, look at that one. I found them. That one is amazing. This one is in a single color. So good. <laughs> that's like that's like the one that Alex made, my, yeah. my test mirror. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And ooh, <laughs> oh, this green one. It's so good. I got the idea of doing that two-toned version. Julie, can you hold that one up? So that one's real subtle. We used Avon and Bone based off of the solid color swatch that Nancy made, mm. right? We made this design so that it was kind of accessible to everyone. So like, if you don't feel like doing the intarsia or, or you just don't, can't be bothered, you could just knit it in one color. It's so beautiful. This is just in French gray, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice, really nice. Yeah. Um, so you, the inspiration behind this, so why did you go towards intarsia cables? Like, I guess, you know, I was kind of bored with brioche <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I have done a lot of intarsia when I, uh, you know, earlier in the eighties and stuff, we were all doing intarsia and I, I, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of get back to it. And I don't know. I, I also, yeah, I don't know. I just put the two cables and intarsia together just to try something else. And I, I think maybe I'd, I'd already started doing all these woven, you know, the woven patterns. Yeah. And I didn't quite want to do that because I think that needs a bit of explanation. So um, yeah, I don't know. I went with the colored cables. And I mean, you know, this is something that, you know, every cable pattern can be in different colors. So, you know, this is just one of thousands of different colored cable patterns that you could do. And uh, so, yeah, 
it was it was fun. It's fun to do. The thing about something like a you know a colorful cable is people are immediately intimidated, thinking, "Oh my heavens, you know how it's so difficult, so difficult." It's not difficult, but it is tedious. <laughs> Meaning that you, <laughs> you know you've got a lot of you've got a lot of threads hanging there, and they get tangled, and you have to untangle them. But I mean. <clears throat> you have to be somebody that's willing to do that and if you're willing to do that if the only part that's actually say difficult is setting it up because you yeah. know you have to set up you know so many stitches in this color so many in that so many in that so many in that so many in that and and so setting it up you have to set it up you have to count it again and make sure that that's right before you continue and yeah that's it's tedious but it's not difficult it's just knitting and purling I mean, it, it, it is. really it's is. Done. It is just knitting and purling. And that was one of the things you told me. You said, I remember you saying to me, you got to let it go, Amy. You got to just let it go. Your yarn's going to be tangled in the back. And yeah. we were reproofing your book again this week because we we're sending it off for the French translation. We were rereading your words translated into French, explaining the entarja. And I mean, I told Julie, I was like, oh my God, I want to do this right now. Like, <laughs> it's so great the way you explained it in the book, too, yes. about the technique and everything. So, yeah, you just kind of have to let it go. What is your advice for that? Like, do you have a, like a basket that sits on the table or something that just holds everything together? Like all the little bits? No, I mean, you know, this is, this is a little one, you know, and each, this is just a really simple one, but you know, each of these little color areas has a little bobbin on it. Now you don't have to use bobbins. I also, for this, for this, I just used really long threads and I just yeah. go like one, two, three, four. Because okay. a length that wise, you can just pull on through, you know, it gets tangled right. and it's too tangly. You just simply pull it through and it's loose. And I mean, you're constantly doing that, but that just becomes part of the process. And the cable part, you know, that, that becomes intuitive too, because you know that these are going to go over and cross and these are going to come back and cross. And, yeah. you know, so it all becomes very intuitive and it's actually really fun. I, Alex will tell you about it when she knitted and I guess Georgie had fun too. <laughs> we'll definitely be but... asking them about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I do like the I do like how you explained it in the book about just having longer bits and that's actually that's what I've kind of been doing. I I, I thought you had to have bobbins. Oh no 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 no. No. Bobbins are <laughs> actually the worst. And if you do have bobbins, what you want to do is you want to keep them really close to that. You you want to keep this really short. Can you see that? Yeah, I see yeah. it. You know, you want to keep it really close because if it's long, it's going to tangle. So you just, you know, you undo a little bit and you work that. And then you undo a little bit and you work the next one. But if you keep the bobbins close, they don't tangle because they can't. And so that helps too, just with avoiding stress. <laughs> That's such a great idea. And also because you use Cory Worsted and it's a natural fiber yeah. yarn, you actually yeah. recommend it just pull off a piece of the yarn and then spit splice it when you mm -hmm. need more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's such a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can continue. Yeah. And you're yeah. kind of weaving in your ends when you split spi splice it too. You don't have a thousand ends to deal with. You only have ends at the bottom and ends at the top. Yeah. No, yeah. no it makes perfect sense. All right, so I learned a new word recently, polymath. And when I learned this word, I thought of my friend Nancy immediately. So let me say this definition of this word, polymath is an individual whose knowledge spans a substantial number of subjects known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. For me, I think that you're like a knitting polymath. Um, I don't know how many times, like literally this week that I've like texted or called you because I've had a question for knitting and stuff. Can you tell us how you know so much about knitting? It's just simple. You know, I started knitting when I was like six or seven and I never stopped and I'm 72. So I've got 65 years of experience, you know, so I've, I've, I've more or less just sort of tried it all. Yeah. I mean, I, I've done crochet. I've done, I've done all kinds of textiles. I mean, I've always done textiles and, uh, but knitting is the one that was always there. And um, yeah, I was attracted to it when I was very young and I just, I just never put it down. So. Okay, Julia, what's, what's the joke? I hear <laughs> I'm sorry. Linda just posted in the chat. 
best looking 72 year old I've ever <laughs> Maybe I should get real close to the screen and you can, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Linda, stop stop chatting, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, okay, let's let's move on to this question. Is there a designer that inspires you? Oh, well, there are actually quite a few. Oh, let's hear them. Well, I mean, you know, like I, I mean, Stephen, of course. Stephen is not only my friend, but I mean, we're constantly bantering back and forth about you know, color and shapes and he wants to see what I'm doing and I want to see what he's doing, you know, and he's got this memory. He remembers stuff, which mm. just amazes me because I can't remember the name of whatever I made last week. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, Stephen definitely is somebody that uh, inspires me for sure. I mean, uh, uh, Natasha, who has, she was, she test knit. She's one of the test knitters we're talking about tonight. I mean, uh, Natasha is, I, I don't know her as well as I know Stephen, but I mean, she definitely, uh, yeah, inspires me to, I mean, she looks at things differently than I do, but mm. yet what she does is very, very, very interesting. And I mean, that's what I, I like when somebody, uh, Olga too, what, uh, what Stephen said too, Olga has very interesting designs. Uh, Cecilia Campocharo, who wrote sequence knitting and marled knitting. I mean, she and I are both kind of nerdy about researching things to the max and uh she's even worse than i am so uh yeah i mean uh, and nancy bush one of my oldest friends i mean we uh yeah i and alex i mean i just yeah yeah i'm i'm always impressed alex is one of those test knitters uh, and she'll probably tell you this we're going to show you this but i would make something when i was first starting out with all this brioche i would make something and i would bring it to the knitting group and i would show everybody and i have these you know i have this this is a two color brioche scarf this is probably the first one that i a shawl that i made okay <laughs> i'm showing it to you and you can see that it's like oh yeah that's two colors nancy you know and it's like a dark purple and a dark red and then I gave the pattern to Alex. You know, she's like, can I have it? And I don't know if you can see her screen. Hold on, let, know, me, she, let me bring back. her forward. Yeah, she came back to the knit group two day, or a week later with that one. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. so I made it again in those kind of colors. I mean, Wait a minute, hold yours up again, Nancy, just so okay. that we can get the full view of that. Do you see the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, so I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm constantly inspired by other knitters and, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 well, the thing about knitting that's just so wonderful is everybody makes it differently. And, yeah. you know, we all use different colors. We use different yarns. We make the shaping a little bit different or, you know, it's just, and it's just amazing to this day that we can still come up with new ways of using these this very very old technique yeah i mean I look agree. there are what 300 people here tonight just you know wanting you know wanting to know more about knitting or wanting to you know yeah it's just it's just the best it is the best, the best. so i brought up um alex and georgie who have test knit for nancy and i'm looking for natasha natasha can you raise your hand so She's, i can... yeah because on my screen i can't change it because I have to oh. keep it on this one. So if, if Natasha can just raise her hand, she'll come up to the top of the line and then I can pin her. Oh, or no, you have to raise your hand in in uh, the- Oh, uh, in Zoom. Yeah, put that oh, little- Julia, if you see her, you you should be able yes, to- Yes, I'm out. scrolling because it's um, alphabetical so I can find Natasha. Hang on. If you go down to the reactions at the bottom of your screen and then you can just raise your hand. You'll pop right up to the front of the line here. Somehow when we went to break the order- There it is. Good. Do you see her? She's no, I don't. She's got clapping hands. Does that matter? I wish. It's supposed to be a oh, I just meant her. <laughs> okay. I did something. <laughs> Hold okay. on, I don't see her. I think I have to pin her. I don't know. Oh, I maybe. get Natasha to come up. Um, I'm okay. here. Oh, okay. I can hear you, but I don't see her. I see Julia. I have to pin her. Um, okay. There she is. Okay, Natasha, I found you. Yes. Yeah. There we go. All right. So I just have one question for Nancy. If you could be a knitting technique, 
Oh we'll dear. Call you smart to be. <laughs> well. Okay, wait, wait. Let's take it. Hold on just a second before you answer. Everybody answer in the chat. What knitting technique do you think that Nancy would be? Let's see what everyone says in there. <laughs> Duh. Okay. Brioche, brioche, brioche. Brioche, 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 brioche. Oh, there's a tuck stitch, stitch. in there. Cable. Tarja. Yeah. <laughs> in Tarja. Yep. Yeah. The B well, word. <laughs> the B word. <laughs> All right, Nancy. <laughs> Do you see Steven's answer? Do you see Steven's answer in the screen? Uh, I did not see Steven's answer. Steven's Where's answer Steven? is doggy brioche. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's calling out brioche now, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> and someone said all of them, all of the techniques, which <laughs> you could be. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I'm going to destroy everybody's uh, image of me and say it's not going to be brioche. <laughs> Because what is it's going to be these woven knitting things that I'm doing now? Because that's the latest thing I'm doing. So that's awesome. So the, the official technique is woven knitting. Is that I don't know. You just made I it guess. up. There you go. Yeah, that's woven knitting. Is. Show us. Show us. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, <laughs> I've made some. I've made these vests for my my daughters. Oh my gosh. So this is the the front, and this is the back. I switched the the light and the dark. That's amazing. And then this is um, this is for my other daughter. <laughs> There's exploding brains in the in the chat. Like <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. These are really they're really pretty. And then uh, uh, some of you may have seen this one too. This is with all of the Cory worsted colors. Uh, yeah. This one I held I held a hostage for a couple months. <laughs> yeah, you liked that one, didn't you? I did. I wore it at Rhinebeck. People were flipping out, Nancy. Yeah. yeah Fiona really says, fun. Nancy, can I be your daughter, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody just asked if you could show the wrong side of those vests. Sure. Just, can you turn one inside out? Yeah. You guys are going to be impressed. It's so tidy. It's. I'll do this one. Wow. This is actually, this is, you know, it's when you, when you do weaving, when you're weaving, you have warp threads, you know, that they go up and down, up and down, and you have weft threads that go in between them, you know, that get caught. Right. And so basically when you're knitting these things, you have warp threads that go up. And those are the ones that are like on bobbins, you could say, they mm -hmm. will be continued up. And then you have the weft threads that are going to be knit across. So they're That's stranded crazy. across. So that's basically how you do it. So it's intarsia, it's stranded intarsia, you could say. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thanks so much, Nancy, for sharing with us. You're welcome. All right. Good so day. we want to meet your test knitters here. So we oh, have, I want you to meet them. Yeah, we've got <laughs> Alex, who's local to you. She lives in Amsterdam. No. Now, where do you live, Alex? I live in a town called Den Helder, which is about an hour and 20 minutes north of Amsterdam. Great. We have I'm Georgie. Trusting. We have Georgie Suta, who lives here in Paris. And we have Natasha. And do you live in Amsterdam, Natasha? Oh, hang on. I have to unmute. Oh, Natasha. OK. okay. Yeah. No problem. I did it. Hmm. Hold on a second. She's still muted. There we go. Mm, there we go. We got it. So Natasha, you're based in Amsterdam, right? I am. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to turn over this segment to Julia. She's going to ask her questions to the testers. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Georgie. Oh. <laughs> Georgie, you go first. Very honest. Because we, we know each other actually very, very well. Because yeah. Georgie, <laughs> a little, just a little, because Georgie is actually our local sample knitter since you're in Paris. Um, and you've been knitting for Amy for a very long time. Um, yeah, for a long time. Yeah. But the can't. <laughs> no, I, but mean, I can't says... even remember when Georgie started. It was before I started La Bini Me. It was back mm. when I had the cafe. Yeah, the cafe. Yeah. 
because Georgie, you were a regular at the Knit Nights at Loisiveté. Yes. I remember I met you there before I also yeah. started working at La Ages ago, ages ago. Yes, a long time ago. Yeah, and, and so you come every week. We have a meeting every week where mm -hmm. we do fittings and we give you yarn and everything. So thank you for being with us tonight, Georgie. Oh, thank you for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so can you please tell me a little bit where you're from? Well, I was born in Hungary and uh, then I went to live to USSR or <laughs> Union Sovietic, which came <laughs> for five years, then came back to Hungary and then lived in Hungary for five year, more years and then came to France. Mm. Uh, more than 30 years ago so <laughs> I, I won't tell more because then you will guess my age <laughs> well now you're a Parisian that's all we need to say <laughs> so <Yeah>. that is. <laughs> Nancy is too young she gave us her age I, I am not so <laughs> well you can keep things to yourself that's okay yes I will keep it for myself <laughs> And so, knitting, Georgie. Oh, knitting. I was, I was learning knitting. I was about four, maybe a, a little smaller. And it was because I lived in a big, big, big uh, house with a lot, uh, lot of people, but not any children. So I was, uh, I was on my own and my grandmother taught me to knit and, and I really loved it. So uh, fall in love with knitting at four. Of course, I didn't know anything. So <laughs> I made dolls for, I made, I made dresses for dolls and things like this. It was, of, it was not good at all with big <laughs> holes. <laughs> but I loved it. <laughs> I and now it. you're a professional knitter. Yes. You knit for a living. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. I would yeah. consider Georgie a professional knitter. She has been an LBA staff knitter pretty much from the very first year that I started the brand. Mm -hmm. And so she Because, knits... you know, I love very much all knitting techniques. So my favorite thing, if I'm not knitting, I am reading about knitting. And I, I love reading about all techniques and I want to try everything and want to do everything. So... That's very cool, I think, yeah. I remember one time we were having a conversation, the three of us, because our meetings are always a lot of talking about yarn and knitting. And you and Amy said you actually read patterns for fun. And I was like, what? <laughs> yes, yes, that is my favorite uh, bedtime uh, pro uh, yes. <laughs> yes, if you want to gift Georgie something, gift her a pattern. She loves to read patterns. That just blows yeah. my mind. <laughs> even, even if I don't knit, because I don't have as much time, I wanted to knit every uh, old patterns, but I don't have time, but I read them and it is just so amazing. I, I love doing because it make working your mental. You know, mm. it is very, very imaginative. It exercises mm. you your brain. It. So that is fantastic. I think it is the best reading. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing that's incredible so let's talk a little bit about canal because ah. so you tested canal for yeah. for nancy and nancy actually knit the sample that amy is wearing and yeah. so you knit the second sample which is the two-toned one in avoine and bone yeah one. It looks very good on screen. Yes, it looks really, really good. Yeah. And so can you tell us a little bit about how, what that process was like? Did you enjoy yeah, it? Because I, I just want to say, I remember um, Amy said, there's a couple of really difficult patterns in the book. Let's give those to Georgie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, it's because she's a professional knitter. Seriously, she's a, an excellent knitter. Excellent yes. knitter. In Tarja yeah. cables, no problem. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I was very intimidated, to tell you the truth. I was intimidated uh, 
very, very much. And then I read Nancy's notice and I give a try. And well, okay, I got in, I got in too. So in fact, it is not as difficult as you can. The difficulty mm -hmm. with mine, version was that there are two colors which are very close. Yes, yes. the colors are very close. I remember you said the the hard part for you was actually yeah. the closeness of the of the two colors and it is true. Yes. Yeah. Imagine it knitting that at night. Light in my home, you know, at Paris you don't have good light. Well, we you don't have, have a lot light. of light. In my home you don't have light at all, so it is just a kind of work for blind. <laughs> <laughs> But but it is very, very worth to do this. Yes. Yeah. I've learned so much. I'm very grateful to you and to Nancy because mm. it taught me tons of things, tons of things. Mm. Even yeah. even if I knew if I knew very well how to do in Persia, I as Nancy told, uh, I can tell the, in, in the eighties I needed tons of in Persia. Tons of in Persia. But not this kind of interest. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very challenging project. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just like, I, I cannot imagine knitting something like this for now. But at the same time, you it can, is. You can, Julia, you don't be silly. You can, of course. Yeah. You can. Yeah, because at the same time, you do, you do your front panel, which is the actually the fun part. And then you have some relaxing. Yeah, you have relaxing knitting for the rest of this. Yeah, absolutely. It's just mustard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so, Georgie, I would like to know uh, when you're not professional knitting, uh, knitting for your work, what do you knit for yourself? And what do you prefer knitting for yourself? Definitely garments. Definitely. I am almost dreaming about garments. So cardigans, clothes, uh, uh, yeah, mostly. And uh, sometimes I need shies or other uh, things. I, I, when I really, really need. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you really, really need a shawl or a hat, sometimes you need one. Yes, but <laughs> you know me, I am like, uh, I love wearing the same thing because I think my, my clothes give me uh, some assurance. Mm, yeah, yeah, confidence. yeah, confidence mm. and security. So I love wearing my, my knitted uh, objects. And basically, mm. I love simple shapes, but I can love complicated shapes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love everything about knitting. I love everything about textures, everything about fabrics, whatever. What else? <laughs> so, so it's just, I, I don't know, Stephen is still there. I think Stephen's there. Stephen, yes, I think so. He just needs okay, to raise so his I hand and come just, up to the front of the, the line. I, just, can I, I brought just this to show because, because these are not at all my colors. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I crazy love knitting this. Oh and my I gosh, I love it. Very, very much. Oh, so, Georgie, I've never seen this, I think. <laughs> so pretty. That's so you know, good. I have of knitting you have never seen, Julia. Really. Bring it. <laughs> so love this. it. And that that is also Stephen. Okay. Someone is asking what is the name of that show? Isn't it Holy Chevrons? Holy Chevrons. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think I, I I even can't remember. It was mm. so. And it is this Enchanted Mesa. Oh, oh yes, beautiful. Hey. And it is in fingering weight, of course, because I, I don't love sink things. So everything I I see and I want to knit, I translate it into fingering or lace. But, so but that, that every time you start knitting something for yourself, you're like, oh, I just printed the chart and then I modified everything. <laughs> that, that, that happens to me. Well, it is so great with knitting that you can do this. I modify all patterns I knit for myself too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You yeah. know, this this is a holy project because oh. it is the, the case that Julia was talking talking about that I modified everything. This is the very, very first. So it is not good <laughs> at all. This is a it is a very nice 
pattern, but it is just oversized. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. So you it can is give it to me. For a very- <laughs> I'll take it. I love that sweater. <laughs> okay. So now I am on the probably on the fifth version. I am knitting of this to adapt for light fingering weight and uh, to adapt the shape because it is really, really neat to reshape. But there are some uh, designing elements, some pattern elements that I want to keep. So it is a real, real hard uh, brain work to work it out. So I am on the fifth version about, I am knitting and I I think now it will go. So in (laughs) some few weeks, you will see the final result. (laughs) Well, that's amazing, Georgie. Thank you so much for sharing everything. And Honestly, if you guys see some of the knitting that I show on Instagram or then in the book, it is Georgie that has knit those samples. Mm. And sometimes I'll start. What's also amazing is I can start a project. I give it to Georgie. She matches my gauge and she finishes it for me. So (laughs) that's the biggest deal because we are not exactly the same. We don't have the same gauge. Mm. (laughs) We all need a Georgie in our life. Yes, we do. Mm. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you, guys. Georgie, if you were a knitting technique, what would you be? Well, I think I would be short rows because short rows are very, very useful. I learned I learned about short rows. So I, I began knitting at four and I've learned only learned about short rows when I was about 20 in Russia. When a lady talk to me about you know you should because i i did in this time i designed for people uh, design knitting uh, things for people they they asked me to do this or that and then the, a, la- a lady told me about that exists a technique but i don't remember the name in russia uh, that you can do this and that and that but the thing is that it was almost impossible to find any literature on these uh, things. And so I need to work out to learn like this and that. Ah, how do you do? But I never see how to do. So basically, and I did it, but not very well. It was not well done because I don't know how to do. And then I told it definitively in a good way only when I was in France. So Mm. only... 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Only 30 and, years ago. And okay. It is a very, very useful technique. You yes. can make hands way and it lets you shaping. So I shape everything I want. Mm. And that is very, very cool. Yes. Yeah, it's true. That is. Yeah. Thank you so much, Orji. Thank, Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Bye. So now we're going to talk to Natasha. I don't meet you. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. So Thank you, you so much for having me. Yay. You have been a test netter for Nancy. I have been, yes. Yes. And so I wanted to ask you to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Okay. I'm Natasha Hornby. I was born in South Africa. Uh, I spent my childhood on the island of Texel, which is a beautiful little island in the northwest of the Netherlands. And when I was 17, I moved to Amsterdam. So, and I'm still living there. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been knitting? Uh, How long have I been? I've, I learned to knit when I was about five years old. I knitted my first sweater when I was eight. I stopped when I was 12 and picked it up again when I was 47. (laughs) (laughs) Nice break right there. <laughs> Can I ask what inspired you to pick it back up again? Um, I was having a burnout. Mm. I was um, at the time I was working in a juvenile justice institution as a psychologist. Um, just a, a environment with a lot of fear and a lot of um, trauma and stuff like that. So after a few years, I just got burned out. I was at home. I was scared of everything. 
And then I thought, well, I need so I need to make something again because I hadn't done that for a long time. And I was thinking something soft, something that can keep me in the house. And I started knitting again. Oh, uh, lovely. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, from knitting, how and why did you want to start test knitting? Uh, well, when I started knitting, I had never knitted anything from a pattern. I didn't really know they existed. So I, but then um, in this period that I uh, picked it up again, because my mother also is an avid knitter, but also never knitted something from the pattern. We just did something, you know, <laughs> and um, I discovered Ravelry. I thought, whoa. Uh, I think a lot of us were like, whoa. <laughs> 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 I, like, mind blowing. And um, I, um, I, I uh, bought my first pattern and I learned myself the lingo and started knitting, making heavy modifications right away. Mm -hmm. And when I uh, developed myself as a knitter, I thought, well, the next step will be to be a test knitter mm -hmm. to see how that works and um also yeah more interesting than mm -hmm. just buying something and starting to knit it mm -hmm. uh I, I thought of it as a skill builder and also yes. yeah something like that yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah and for nancy i started test knitting because i was already designing and i had a writer's block and i wanted to empty my head and then to knit someone else's pattern is um, it empties your head and at the same time it builds your skills mm -hmm. also in the pattern writing because you see how someone else does it um, in the technique because I did before that I because I what I tested for Nancy was her world show oh, you see it? wow yes oh, really beautiful yeah yeah. And I said to her, I want to, I, I would love to test knit, but I never, I'm, I'm quite shit at brioche and I never did any <laughs> two color brioche before, but she says, ah, give it a go. So That's how you get better. <laughs> That's kind of what Nancy says all the time. Just give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> Practice it. Yeah. So that is, uh, that is how I became, uh, how I tested for Nancy. Hmm. That's great, and you're a you're a great designer as well. I mean, your Instagram. I just I was scrolling through it yesterday, and I kept telling Amy, "My gosh, look at this shawl! It looks like it's quilted. It looks like it's actually. I think it's one of the last ones that you released with all the little tassels. It actually looks so squishy. Yeah, I was thank like, you. <laughs> imagine it in Cori confetti." <laughs> I'm already imagining it. <laughs> Thank you. It's lovely compliment. Yes. So, and now you, as a designer, use test knitters as well. Yes, I. Uh, even today, we started a test. So, uh, twenty people That's are right. testing something. Yeah, oh, yeah. So you've and been in the, always... you've been in their shoes. <laughs> yes, and but my my the, the, my test knit crew is like. The most amazing testnet crew of the universe, really, really. They <laughs> really helped me to get a pattern as good as it can be. And well, I feel really secure when I uh, when I release when when I've worked with them. So yeah, it's very and we always make it into almost a little knit along, but with a serious undertone. So mm. it's also a lot of fun and uh, build a very nice community because I have some some regular testers and they also look each other up in real life. And so it's, yeah, I, oh, I, I love it, the, the yeah. part of the process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And would you like to talk to us a little bit about what you've been working on recently? Um, yes, I can do that. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that is going, is, is into the testing phase right now. I'll stand up and do the, do the wow. little the little fashion show <laughs> as everyone did so this is the one that's now into the testing phase because as nancy i have a fascination with um with knitting that looks woven maybe you can see it also in my work mm. yes and but she chooses a, a, a very different route to express that than what mm -hmm. i do um 
I love the mosaic because also it has that woven appearance and I'm always mm. looking for uh, stitch patterns that also have that, that, mm. that, that wovenness. Um, so I've been working on this one and after a while, because there's much more to come, but I'm also working on, I'm now swatching this, also that, that, that woven look and to see what that will do. It's a simple slip stitch pattern, but so that is where I have been working on lately. <laughs> How beautiful. Incredible. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> and so if you were a knitting technique, which one would you be? Well, I don't think a serious knitter will consider the technique, but it would be fudging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I accept that answer because I fudge every single one of my projects. I have an extra stitch. I'm like, yeah, just knit two together. Like. Yes. It's so many times you hear people say, I'm uh, I'm scared of that or something like that. It's so intimidating. And then I think, well, it's a piece of string and two sticks. You are the boss. Come on. <laughs> and if you know how to fudge, then it Come, becomes less intimidating and please you are the boss of your knitting knitting mm. like a boss yeah and don't be intimidated <laughs> by two sticks and a piece of string just be fierce and be fearless i love wow, that that's so a great much. way to Such see a good it philosophy Amazing. thank you so much <laughs> natasha <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> and thank you for joining us it was a pleasure to be here <laughs> And so now I'm going to talk to Alexandra. Hi, Alex. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so you're one of the test knitters for Nancy, and we can see you're wearing your canal poncho. Wow. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I love oh, it. You're amazing. I love it so much. I yeah. mean, th this is a thing that I wear a lot, actually. Not just because it's beautiful, but it just feels so good. <laughs> it's super practical. People are like, yeah. poncho? No, but like, honestly, like I am so yeah. free. Yeah. In the air. I can like access my pockets. It's like, I'm not hot. Like I've been yeah. wearing this the entire evening and I don't feel too hot. It's yeah. great. It's the perfect garment. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks amazing, amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank and I have so to much. show you the inside because you haven't seen the inside. Look. <laughs> so tidy. Oh, yeah. I could... And that's, it looks that's perfect. Na perfect. That's Nancy's technique. She taught us how to do that. Yes. Oh, well, of course. Of course. Yes, this is explained in the book. I yes. read it yesterday, and Julia was looking at me. And I was like, my mind's blown right now. <laughs> 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 so thank you so much for joining us, Alex. Uh, can you please tell us where you're from? Oh, you just told us. Sorry. Well, I told you where I live. Originally, yeah. I'm from the U.S. Oh, as can, okay. As you can tell from my accent, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I haven't lived in the U.S. except for a small stint of, of uh, moving back for a few years. But um, I moved to Europe in 1992, so mm -hmm. a long time yeah okay and how long have you been knitting uh, um if i add it up i think 40 years oh, wow. 40 45 years yeah i'm also old yeah. <laughs> i love the also <laughs> i don't know who she talks about <laughs> <laughs> and so um how long have you been test knitting um actually i've i've only really test knit nancy's patterns i don't mm -hmm. think i've test knit anybody else's oh yeah well back when i was in college in the 70s but you know that's ages ago <laughs> um so yeah um nancy's things okay mm. and i met nancy I took a brioche class. That's where I met Nancy at the off stop in Amsterdam. Yeah. And then um, we were part of the same knit group, Knit Night. 
And she would bring stuff to the knit night and just like, oh my God, I have to make that. <laughs> and that's kind of how it got started. I think the first, Nancy, I think this is the first thing I ever made for you. You remember this? <laughs> Ooh, that's This pretty. is an Intarsia two color brioche scarf. Ooh. I think from your first book, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and then she says, yes. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then I knit well you saw that you saw oh yeah and she stole my name <laughs> <laughs> I started I started a blog because yeah I, blogging was a thing even in the early 2000s but I started a blog in about 2006 I think mm -hmm. and the name of my blog and the name that I use everywhere on mm -hmm. social media is under Dutch skies and then Nancy shows up with this pattern <laughs> under Dutch skies. And here's a one color version. So wow. Oh, wow. wow. Gorgeous. But this is really fine, fine lace yarn. Yeah. Oh, that's very pretty. Oh, yeah. And then there's this one. This is <gasps> Willow. From the Leafy Brioche. Yep. No, mm -hmm. from the book before that. Uh. Oh. Um, yeah, Nancy just, she gave me this pattern here, make this if you want to. So I made it and I gave it to her. She was going to the U S for photo shoot and stuff. And I said, well, I'll use it if you want to use it, whatever. <laughs> whatever. And, it, and it, ended up on the, it ended up on the cover of the book. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I know which book it is now. Okay. And she never lets me forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and I also I love this one. It doesn't get enough love. This one. Oh wow! This that has very pretty. This has brioche and tuck stitches and garter. Yep. Wow, yeah. wow, wow! That looks beautiful. And so, I can we talk a little a bit about your canal poncho? Just oh. one second before we move ahead. What's the name of that shawl? Alex, that you just held up. This is, what is it, Nancy? Three stitch shawl? <laughs> Nancy is like, no, no. I'm asking because I'm going to put show notes up, you guys. I, I rewatched this before <laughs> posting it, so I take notes. That's okay. I'm going to bother Nancy later about this. Okay. I'll get the, I'll yeah. get the name of the shawl. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about our canal ponchos. Yeah. So this poncho i have to say i i didn't really follow nancy's methodology of dealing with the ends she just did long strings but i really appreciated using the bobbins okay i used bobbins and also i did really long strings when i started and i wound up my bobbins so i knit the whole thing without having to add a new oh. string in Okay. So the whole length. Um, and I knit it mostly sitting at a table. Mm, but I, yeah. I couldn't cope with all of it being on my lap. I had it yeah. on a table and I would sit and it, I would untangle every two rows or so. Mm. Um, but I really enjoyed knitting it. People shouldn't be too intimidated by it. Mm. You could just take a breath, take your time let it go there's going to be tangling it's going to happen it's going to happen <laughs> yeah but i also like untangling yarn balls so i love it too that. i love untangling yarn you know like yeah. when your your necklace gets all tangled and you have to untangle the chain uh -huh. i love that i know yeah <laughs> and it's not like you have to do like a whole entire sweater you do the front panel yeah so yeah exactly yeah, yeah. exactly and i love your yarn amy Oh, thank you. I truly love this yarn. It feels so nice in my hands. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. And, and you used Hegelia as the main color. Yes. Yeah, so, so why don't you stand up so we can get a good view? I'll tell everyone. Mm. So she used Hegelia for the main color, um, Rust, Winterfell, and for the lighter color, I can't tell on the screen. It's a little... Is it Avoine or French Grey? Uh, Avoine. Avoine, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm yeah gorgeous yeah they yes. all work together so well the colors mm. yeah yeah mm. 
It is so pretty. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so uh, what the, have you been working on recently? Um, well, just as another as another Nancy Lee <laughs> from from the tuck stitch book, I started playing with tuck stitches mm. and made this sweater with 10 colors of yarn and sort of faded it, but it's a tuck stitch. Wow, I love tuck stitches. Oh, wow, that's so beautiful. Mm. Um, and well, I'm knitting mittens. I finished one. And <gasps> beautiful. One. Look at those. And I'm and actually- she spins. she spins. I'm actually Ooh. doing a lot of spinning lately. I'm doing a series on my blog called Experimental Spinning. And I'm doing lots of color experiments, like for example, doing five ply, four ply, oh. three ply, two ply, and seeing how the colors play together and how the texture feels, um, wow, that kind of thing. And also um, looking at mixing opposite colors like purple and yellow and orange and blue. I love that. And green and red, which Ooh. really looks like brown when you- Wow, yes. Up. And all six, this is six ply. And what does that do? And then if you put them on a drum carter, what does that do? Oh, wow. In your color Julia, is this maze. like blowing your mind? You just got into spinning, so she's like. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, I mean, I did try two plying and it seemed to work. I only have a drop spindle, so everything is completely new and fun and difficult and interesting. So, yeah. Come to my house. Come to my house. <laughs> Five spinning wheels. I've My got... gosh, I'm dying to try spinning on the spinning wheel. Oh, I just I don't know life. anyone who has one. It'll change your life. <laughs> Someone in the chat says, "Welcome to the spinning rabbit hole." Oh yes, it is a, a it is a rabbit hole, and I'm like, I have no stash. I have to buy fiber. It's a, the perfect excuse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's okay, a rabbit right. hole, all right. Yeah, I'm booking my ticket, Alexa. I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> <Talk about this. laughs> we can we can go to Tessel as well, and and uh, yes, Natasha can come, and we can all go to Tessel and buy yarn. Buy Let's all meet up in Amsterdam. I think that yeah. that'll be super fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Can we finish by asking you if you were a knitting technique, which one would you be? I think I'm kind of like Nancy in that whatever I'm currently working on is my new love. And I, I think because of all the color stuff I'm doing, just stuck in it. Because then you can play with the yarn and the texture and the color and not yeah. worry about the stitch and technique, just all the other stuff. Yeah, I love that. I don't know what technique I would be. I mean, every single answer tonight has been like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me bring uh, Stephen back up. Thank you, testers. It's so lovely to meet you guys. Thank you so much. They're the best. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. We need those test knitters. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oh, I just saw Stephen. Where did he go? There you are. Hi. Okay. Stephen's not, Stephen's still muted. I know. And Stephen, yeah. did you start a new project? Did you yeah, like find off? Even, <laughs> yeah, I got inspiration from everybody's answers. So there's a little bit of yeah, color. I'm doing some brioche, some lots of color work, some marling. I'm doing a, a sweater, but really I'm making this sweater because I want a matching dog sweater. So that's my new inspiration. It's like, what do I want my dog to look like? I want to look like a big version of that. Oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> wait. Please, please share progress on Instagram. We want to see. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for our first knit night. It was awesome. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm. This is recorded. So this the replay will be popping up on YouTube this weekend. And we will have another one in in less than two weeks um our next guests are going to be max and vincent from les garçons so we're excited mm -hmm. to have them so thank you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you for the next knit night
Bye. Bye. Bye.